but just first want to welcome Michael and his wife, uh, newlyweds, uh, Sarah, to the Reyes family. Um, Michael was a priority target of ours for several reasons. Um, our need for, for pitching and length in particular is something that's been well documented. Um, Michael is going gonna, is gonna to help us in that regard. Um, you know, the, the thorough, very thorough work of our staff, you know, major league staff, to scouts, to our R&D group, to medical, um, you know, everything that went into how to best interpret uh, what we saw in 2020, um, which was not an easy task. And we'll see how accurate we are with these things and our understanding of how they projected 2021. But Michael was someone that we identified uh, that, that carried a lot of upside looking, looking ahead and looking into to next year. Uh, the makeup, the competitiveness, uh, Rick's on this call here. Um, I, just the longstanding reputation as, as being as good as it, as good as it gets. And, um, you know, we have a lot of young, impressionable talent on our club and, and to have veterans and at the, you know, at the age of 29, uh, Michael's very much a veteran within our group, but to, to have someone that carries himself the way that, that Michael does and, and goes about his business the way that Michael does, that is something that's, that's really important to us. Not, not the reason that we, we, you know, ultimately pursued Michael, you know, the talent has to drive these things, but, but who he is as a person is certainly something that uh, carried a lot of appeal within, within this pursuit. Um, and lastly, I think just to his desire um, to be here and, and the confidence that, that he showed in us and our organization uh, through our pursuit and believing that this was the right place for him to spend 2021. And, um, you know, it's, I, I, we'll let Michael speak for himself, but obviously it's been a bit of a turbulent few years for him um, and to really believe that this was the best place for him and for his career um, to take the step forward that we identified in him and that he believes um, he has, you know, that he sees himself and in himself, um, you know, means, means a lot. And, and to get something like this done now, rather than, you know, much deeper in the winter, uh, it's, it's a one-year deal and, and there's so much benefit to just hitting the ground rolling now, you know, and to make the most of the time that it's there for us uh, before we get into camp, you know, to really learn him, for him to learn us and uh, make the most of most of things, this is this is critical time for us. So, uh, beyond that, just want to want to quickly thank uh, Kevin Ibach on our side, Jeff Barry with with CAA um, for for getting this done. Um, we're, we're we're happy to have gotten it done, and uh, I, I suppose with that, have, you know, can open it up to any questions that that you all have. Well. Um... Michael said your your honesty was a big appeal and your candor, so I think you should probably get credit for this as well. Yeah, I don't, wait, did you guys already talk to Michael? Yeah, we got the scoop from him. Oh, I thought he was after. Oh man. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you read all of do you, do you read all of Dave notes as closely as you did this one? Or uh, it's, uh, look, it's twenty twenty <laughs> kids. You got a, a lot to balance here. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, so. Um, Without, we're still at the winter meetings. So I know I am. I'm, yeah. this, I'm, I'm riding this out <laughs> through the week here. So we're missing Charlie Montoya for you, by the way. Nah, that's too bad. Uh, just um, without without getting into too many acronyms, but what about what kind of under the hood stats with him did you see? I mean, what what can you you know what was the selling point that made him appealing? You know, obviously the base numbers, you know, candidly, are not very appealing. He said he had some arm issues. What yeah. what made him appealing, and and what is the status health wise too? Well, uh, there's a, a, a few things without getting getting too deep and um, overly revealing. I'd probably work in reverse order here and, and touch on the medical first. Um, that that's something that we we took a close look at for obvious reasons. You know, you look at the last three years and and, and, and some of I think the the struggles he's had can be attributable to um, his health. You know, and and how he was feeling and, and certainly missed some time and in in 2020 uh but the the deeper we got into it from a health standpoint the more that the the consensus opinion uh that frankly carried all the way through to the the exam was that in the condition he's in right now the work that he's doing this winter where his body's at the hands on everything that this is someone that we should we should look at as your average 29 30 year old starting pitcher um you know pitchers get hurt <laughs> things things happen and, and he has had some injuries but but believe that moving forward that the the risk on him is is not particularly elevated relative to to his peers um from a 
the performance and expectation and upside standpoint. You know, I, I think there's, without, without getting too deep in anything, I think there was a, a renewed willingness to, to attack the zone early. Uh, I think there was, um, you know, some, I, I don't want to say growth because that sells short the experiences that, that he's had and the people he's worked with prior. But um, I, I think when he was getting into two strike counts, uh, some of the things he was doing approach wise showed, you know, were, were encouraging to us. Um, the, the cutter, you know, cutter slider breaking ball and, and the way he was beginning to utilize that last year uh, showed a lot of promise to us. The, the, the mix to have something that paired with a fastball change and could serve a purpose and hold the change up back, you know, in situations where that was the, the two strike pitch, et cetera. Um, I think just gave him a little bit more versatility to, to navigate counts um, in a way that was encouraging to us. And obviously, I mean, the big thing last year, he got bit by the homers, you know, he, he, he allowed a lot of them. Um, he, he did to us, you know, when, when, when we saw him. And again, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, trying to, and, and he got bit by the homer bug a little bit the year prior. So it's not like it was just a one year, you know, short sample thing, but you know, when, when we're looking ahead and we're looking where he is physically now, where the ball's coming out, the, the pitch mix, the pitch development, you know, I think we, we took much more of a glass half full approach, um, I would say. And, and saw some of these attributes as being more stable and more likely to um, to settle in, in in favorable spots than you know the home run rate, for example, which which really inflated things. And you know, I, I don't know how that'll bear itself out over time. Um, you know, and and but and, and when you attack the zone, and I think when you do some of the things that he was willing to do last year, you're you're going to allow some homers, and and we see that with our own staff and, and some of our guys. But um, all in all, like I said, I, I think just someone that. The, the the deeper our staff got into it, you know, it went from saying like, oh man, like best years behind them to uh, to looking at them and saying, look, the health outlook on this is more optimistic than we might have thought going in, you know, given just a surface level look and and, and really getting into the, the, the pitch development, the the mentality and where that was in 2020. Um, just feel like there's there's some real life and upside to them that, that should show up in 2021 and knowing just where he is in his career how open he is, how receptive he'll be, um, should make a real, you know, nice, mutually beneficial relationship to, to learn him and for him to be open to Kyle and his thoughts as well. Eric, on that end, how much does the signing also speak to your confidence in Kyle and the staff to be able to get that best out of them based on their history too? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I don't think you have to go back much further than our World Series roster, you know, and, and some of the names that were, you know, in in that mix. And and it's not just Kyle, it's, you know, it's our pitching program top to bottom, how these guys, you know, work together. Um, you know, even, you know, Dewey, Rick Knapp, you know, Winston Doom, you know, on our analytical side and, and just a lot of people that are involved in this program. And, and, you know, if it's, if it's Ryan Sheriff, if it's John Curtis, if it's Sleggers, if it's, you know, I mean, even on the, you know, the, the high end, you know, Charlie Morton and, and, and the work that, that he did. Um, we have a lot of confidence in our, in our pitching program and um, it's not one particular type or style of pitcher. Um, frankly, I think more than anything, it's just, it's the care, it's the human touch that, that they invest in each and every pitcher to help them get the most out of themselves that, that really drives it. But yeah, um, like I said, Mike, Michael's someone that we, we like a lot of the ingredients that we saw on the pieces and, and, you know, I wouldn't, um, have, yeah, I can't imagine having more confidence in any group when it comes to the pitching instruction and the development to bring those things together in the most productive way. Hey, Eric, just kind of big picture. Um, you, you kind of talked about how you guys are playing catch up, obviously, after the, the long postseason run. How do the last two days kind of signing Zunino and then signing Michael today um, kind of shape you guys moving forward here in the offseason? Can you be a little bit more aggressive in certain things? Kind of, kind of where, where are you now? Yeah, it, look, it, it helps. Um, you know, we, <laughs> we, we would have had a forfeit if we didn't have the, the catcher with us. So, um, I don't think Joe West would have enjoyed us uh, pitching without a catcher back there towards him. So, uh, no, I, I think, you know, Z, these, these are areas of needs, of clear needs for us. And uh, so the steps steps in the right direction and, and players that were priority targets of ours. So to, to get them in, given our need to create greater length um, and depth within that group, that was satisfied with Michael and uh, with, with Z. 
you know, we've, it's, it's been a winning recipe for us. And, you know, we're not expecting anything above and beyond what, what Z has provided to us, but believe that's a winning recipe and, and to have him back. And, you know, it's, continuity is not always our thing, you know, and it doesn't mean it's not important. It's just kind of the reality of, of our circumstances at times. And, and to have a catcher that, you know, three years, you know, this is, and I, I mean this, you know, with, and something we really appreciate, you know, what the, the institutional knowledge, the, the, that he has with our pitchers, with our philosophies and the way that we can work together to, to better ourselves um, and to continue to improve is, is a great value. So to have Z back is, you know, it is a big deal for us and it helps to have walk in. It, it does satisfy some needs. And um, yeah, it, it takes a little stress off because you've, you've got a few guys in the door that, that we really like and appreciate. Um, but at the same time, it's December 18th and um, you know, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't keep a whole lot of that stress still active and um, continue to look for ways to, to make our club better, not just in 2021, but you know, for the foreseeable future. Eric, Rick Hummel here. Uh, what does Michael's big game history, uh, what, what, what kind of bearing does that have on this? It's, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, we, we, you know, spent a, a lot of time thinking about it. It's, um, it's really important, you know, and where we are competitively, um, especially, especially so. And he had some of those big game moments, you know, at the very beginning of his career, you know, when he was first breaking into the big leagues and in some ways before you even have the opportunity to process where you are, you just compete, you just go. Um, but, you know, we had, a, we have a lot of young players that, that just shared, you know, these last couple of years have had a lot of success and, and had those similar, you know, early career type of uh, experiences. And, and Michael's are much deeper than that. They last longer than that, but, you know, to have someone and, and look, we, we saw it with, with Charlie, you know, and, and, and the experiences that, that he brought into our clubhouse. Um, those are, those are huge and young players, um, you know, that the, like I said, that the, the makeup, the experiences Michael had, that's it, our group's impressionable. And to have someone in there that's, that's been there, that's lived that, that's, that's done some of those things. Um, you know, it, it really has a benefit to our group and, um, you know, so much about this game is, is obviously physical. It's the on-field talent, but it's the competitiveness. It's, it's the way you control your head. It's the way you do all these other things that really matter. And, and knowing that Michael has that underneath him um, certainly is something that we really appreciate. Anything else for Eric? All right. Yeah. How, and how much better do you feel about the rotation, you know, just literally today versus yesterday? I mean, just having – Someone who, you know, you obviously you're confident in his health and obviously the leadership he brings and, you know, whatever you do with, you know, if you trade or don't trade somebody else, but just to have another key guy who's done, been there and done it. Yeah, it, 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 it helps us feel better. And, you know, as it, injuries happen, there's attrition, you know, I mean, as, as much as we are confident about Michael's health outlook, you know, you, at the same time, we recognize that, despite saying that some of the disruptions that, that he's had, and that could happen to anybody. Um, but, you know, to, to have one more in the mix um, is, is certainly, yeah, we, we feel better. We, we certainly feel better. Um, but, you know, and you, you're, you're still talking about all the disruption that we encountered in 2020 and, um, you know, going back up and workload to, you know, what, we fully expect based on everything that we, you know, we're planning for a full season right now. And, you know, that's, that's a big jump, you know, and, and you really want to make sure um, we're well equipped for that. So we're going to stay at it. Um, you know, I think we can continue to grow deeper um, and, and need to, to take on all that's ahead of us, but certainly something to, to get back to your question. Yeah, we, we do feel quite a bit better just having Michael in the door here. And, and not in any great detail, but some of the guys, you've added a couple of guys to minor league deals that have had some big league experience, too. I mean, Hess jumps out, uh, I think, maybe as the most. Is, that adds to that kind of second layer you were talking about of trying to just increase options. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, there's – look, there's, there's, there's players that – each club is, you know, it's all, it's all the same. You know, you, you have players that you are, you're enabled to provide different opportunities to, and, and they fall into – you know, different criteria, different aisles, whatever, you know, however you want to describe it. And um, we need to make sure we're doing a really good job of within each bucket, within each criteria that we're, 
we're, we're picking the right players, that we're recruiting the right players. And you just, you never know, you know, when, when players are signing minor league deals, it's, it's because collectively the league, um, you know, has lower expectations for them. And, um, and there's usually reasons for that, but you, as we've seen time and time again, that there are players that come out of that, that territory and, and do contribute to the club. And, and it's on us to make sure that, that at each level, you know, when we're bringing people into the organization uh, and talent in the organization, we're, we're picking the right guys that are, that are available at, you know, each, each level that we have for opportunity. Eric, kind of with that being said, what did you guys like about uh, Chris Ellis that you guys also signed today? Yeah, um, great question. Uh, he, he's, he's somebody that um, the, the reports uh, just had a, this winter and and what we're coming in from our, our scouting group scouting group were, were very favorable um ball was coming out well um the the repertoire looked um deeper and uh, more like like something that has a chance to you know to to come in and, and to make a really positive impression so um just just an arm that looked like it might be taking a step forward um and uh, identified by our scouts and excited to, you know, like the same kind of thing, you know, even back to like a Dietrich ends over the some of these guys, you, you just, you, you got to take your swings. You got to get the right guys in, in each bucket. And, and he's someone that um, we, uh, we feel really good about getting in here and, and seeing what we have without trying to raise his expectations too much. Yeah. And just one quick thing. Well, sure. what, well what's kind of his, his status after the surgery yesterday? Yeah. Um, really a, a, a minor procedure, truly. Um, and obviously he's been through a lot and, and so it's hard to hear minor and elbow and surgery and, and not be concerned, but it is, it is something that um, yeah, a little, a little discomfort and something that we had a chance to get cleaned up and just felt for Brent's peace of mind that it would put him in the best position to impact things in 2021 without having any doubt, anything in the back of his mind that, um, you know, the, the time frame is, you know, short enough, reasonable enough that it just, you, you never want to go in there again, but uh, everything went well and, and something that we really don't expect, expect to have uh, impact this 2021 season anyway. What is Honeywell's option status? Did he qualify for that fourth year medical option? Yes, he has. He has a fourth year because of the missed time and, and everything that, uh, that, that he's been through. He does have a fourth option, so he'll have one in, in 2021. Thank you. Yeah.